Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. If you want to see the first episode of the series, you can click the box over here. And if you want to see the Patreon page, you can click this card thing, which is a new addition to YouTube. So I'm not really sure how it's going to look, but it will be somewhere on the screen. I don't know, I've never used it before, but that's the Patreon. And this episode's more of like an update on the, the game as a whole, as opposed to specific changes. We will be making specific changes as far as the like targeting and we're gonna mess with the clock a little bit, but I do wanna talk a bit about the game as a whole and di the uh, direction we're going and some of the choices we have coming up as far as what we wanna work on and in what order. So first things first, let's go to the uh, clock class here and or at least have it open because we're gonna change something here. But first, if you'll remember inside the clock class, we have this multiplier thing, right? We can change it here. We also have the variable named multiplier, but we're not really using it ever. It's set to one by default up here and we never change it. And so what we're gonna do this time is, if you'll remember, our towers are finally tracking our enemies and they're shooting towards our enemies, but the bullets are kind of not great, right? You can see even though the, the enemy is directly down from this guy, he's shooting off like to the left. And so we are going to adjust that, but the reason we're looking at our clock class is because this whole multiplier thing really is kind of an untapped resource that we can be using and we'll start to use more for debugging and deciding like what we want to do to fix certain parts of our game. It allows us to kind of break down things that are happening really fast and see it slower, which is what we're going to do this time. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the uh, player class here and we have our input, right? We have our mouse input and our keyboard input. And we're going to change the keyboard input. So last time we replaced the set tile with making towers. And this time we're going to replace the move index with what we're about to do. So we're kind of replacing these like debugging features that we had earlier and we're replacing it with actual like in-game features. Although I don't know if messing with time in-game is going to stay, but we're replacing these features because one of the things that we can decide to work on, which we'll talk about at the end of the episode, is making like a main menu and like an editor. So we'll have like a separate... Uh, you know, kind of editor mode where you can save and load maps from like text files and stuff that we'll create. And so all of this stuff, such as moving the tile index and setting the tiles is going to go into the editor class, not the player class. So we're going to replace this move index for the right arrow key on the keyboard with clock dot change multiplier. And because we're going to go to the right, it makes sense for me that the right is faster and the left is slower. So we just need to put a positive value in here. So I'll put 0.2 F and you'll see we have an error, which is why we have our clock class open because not very forward thinking of me, the change multiplier only takes an integer. So this is probably the easiest change we'll ever have to make in our game. Just change that to float and we can close the clock class. Easy as that. So now when we hit the right key, we can speed up time by 20% from the default. So it goes from a multiplier of one to 1.2F. So let's copy this right here and paste it right below and change it to key left and make it negative 0.2F. So we can make it slower as well. So we're gonna go ahead and run the game now, but I wanna warn you that so far our game is designed to work at 100% speed, right? Not faster, not slower. So we don't have conditions and code in place to kind of deal with all of the the differences that'll happen at different speeds of time. So it's gonna be a little wonky. We shouldn't get any errors, but it will not work perfectly. So if we go to the left one, two, three, four, five times, we now have a multiplier of zero. So you can see our enemies are not moving at all. If we place a tower down, it will lock on to the enemy because that's not done in a certain time. That's just kind of automatic every update. But it's not shooting, it's not moving. And so we can speed it up with the right arrow. That's 20% speed, 40%. I'll go back down to 20%. And I'm gonna wait for the tower to shoot here. And so the reason we're doing it slower is because we can actually see more precisely exactly what's happening when our tower shoots. I'll pause it right there by going to the left one more time. So we have a multiplier of zero. And so we can easily track where the projectile is coming from, where it's going and follow its trajectory here. It makes it a lot easier. So you can see right now, the projectile is actually targeting the top left corner of each tile, or at least it should be, because we're passing in an enemy and the projectile is heading towards the tile that the enemy is on. 
But if you'll recall, everything is based on the top left corner, right? The X and the Y position of the tile isn't in the center, it's in the top left. So we'll place a few more towers here. You also speed it up really fast and see what happens when you do that. But like I said, it's not really meant for... The game isn't really created for these different speeds yet. We'll be able to handle it later, but for now it's just kind of fun. And also, if you want to try it, you can also go backwards in time. You can see the bullets fly back, but they don't go back into the tower. They just fly reverse of their velocity, and the enemy also just goes back uh, off the map. But I don't know. It's pretty fun to me to mess around with the time like this. But the point of doing this is that we can now see that we can use our clock method, or our clock class in the change multiplier method, to kind of get an easier to view uh, perspective on the things that happen fast in our game, like our projectiles. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the uh, tower class and the projectile class, and we're going to make a couple quick adjustments, just arbitrary numbers that I found work a little bit better than what's happening right now to make our bullets look like they have better aim. And this is a kind of a temporary fix. Like, we will keep this in here, but we're also going to make it so that the bullets actually come out of the tip of the cannon, like the end where the bullets should come out of, because right now they're coming out of the actual cannon base, but uh, we'll do that in the future because that's more more calculus, trigonometry, circular math, and stuff like that. So in the meantime, let's go to our projectile class. And you can see here we have the x distance from our target and the y distance from our target, and we're just getting the target's x and minus in our own. But the x, like I said, is the top left corner. So what we really want to do is go plus 32 and plus 32. Because if you'll imagine we have a 64 by 64 tile, which we do in our game, and we start at the top left corner, we go 32 over and then 32 down, that should be the center of the tile. So in the spirit of getting us prepared for the future and not having to track back and change a bunch of stuff, we should actually use as few of these numbers as possible. I said a few episodes back, a while back actually, that whenever you have a lot of these numbers that aren't like one or negative one or zero, you kind of want to change those to variables so you can easily change them in the future. So let's go to the game class here. And we know that our tiles are 64 by 64. And at least, I mean, most of you guys are, I imagine. Some of you may have different tile sizes, but hopefully for simplicity, you have 64 by 64. So in our game class, we're gonna make a public static final int named tile size. And you'll see if you just set it like that, you'll get an error because you actually need to set it right away because it's a final. So a final means that it can never be changed. So tile size from this point on, from this line on, is always gonna be 64. So we can go back in the game, or I'm, I'm sorry, in like our program to change it, like when we're programming, making the game. So if we decide down the line that, you know what, maybe we want higher resolution, maybe we want like 256 by 256 tiles. We can just change this number here and everything that's based on that should automatically change with it. So let's go back to our projectile class. And instead of saying 32, let's say game dot tile size divided by two, which is the same as 32, but remember we can change it later a lot easier than tracking down all the places we put 32. All right, so now our projectile is actually moving towards the center of the tile instead of the top left corner. So if we run this now, we place our towers down. It'll be easier to see actually when they're uh, at the end of the maze here. So if you pay attention to this guy right here in the corner, once they reach the end of the maze, it should be very clear that the bullets are now going... Let me slow it down a little bit. Wait for him to shoot. They're now going towards the center of the tile. We still have the issue that they're spawning off center of the above tile, right? But if you'll recall, they were going towards the top left, now they're going more towards the center and almost passing through it. The issue here is that the projectile isn't spawning in the center of this tile, it's starting over here. So its velocity kind of towards the center is still gonna be skewed a little bit. It's not gonna make it quite all the way to the left that it needs to. So we can change that as well if we go to our tower cannon class and we need to actually spawn the projectile in a different area. So here we have x plus 32 and y plus 32. We should obviously change this to game.tilesize divided by two. 
and game dot tile size divided by two. Now, in addition to this, we're gonna make one more adjustment. So it would seem that we're already spawning it in the middle of the tile, so what could be wrong, right? Well, this is one of those moments that I wish I had paint open. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna open it right now. All right, so here we are on paint. So let's say this is our tower, right? Our tower is a 64 by 64 texture, even though it actually looks different with like the legs and the base, it still takes up a full 64 by 64 square, if you will. We start at the top left, and we say we want to make our bullet 32 over and 32 down. So that seems like it would work, right? Except we're forgetting that our bullet is also its own 32 by 32 texture. So if we start it right here, the bullet is actually going to spawn inside of this 32 by 32 tile right here. So what we want to do is we want to compensate for this and move this square where the bullet spawns so that it encompasses the center of this bigger tile here. So let's go back into our project and say game to tile size divided by two, which is where we were, minus, it is 16, but we're going to do a correct and make this line a really long line of code. It's game dot tile size divided by four, which is 16. So replace, uh, or don't replace anything, just put minus game dot tile size divided by four. Now let's run the game and hopefully it looks better so I don't look dumb. And let's wait till it is down here at the end so we can see it shoot straight down and see what that looks like. All right, so the enemy's here, so it should shoot going to the left now. That's interesting. So if we go back, we actually see where the projectile spawned. And it seems to spawn where we want it to, kind of right underneath this base. But when it goes forward, it's still going a little bit to the left. You know, I think that our enemy might actually have a position greater than this exact tile when it dies, because it's going a little bit to the left. That's something we're going to work on in the future because we're getting closer with these minor adjustments and stuff. When it comes down to it, we are going to kind of completely, I don't want to say revolutionize, but we're going to change the way our, our tower spawns projectiles anyways because it's going to come out of the end of the cannon here. And that's one of the things we can work on coming up, which brings us to the second part of this episode, which is the main part, I think. Um, don't leave. We are done with the programming for now, but this is affects you, so hopefully you stick around for this part of the uh, episode. So first off, there's a couple things I wanted to say uh, that are cool or successful, happy things for the uh, channel here. Uh, we reached our first milestone on Patreon, which is awesome. So there's no more ads at the end of the videos. So thank you very much to those of you who have supported the Patreon campaign so far. Uh, we also just reached 500 subscribers on the channel today, which is fantastic. Thank you all. And it's really cool because it means that due to the channel only having this series on the channel right now, that's 500 of you that are all watching this game programming series. So you're in good company. Got a lot of people that are really uh, devoted to making a sweet game here. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, I also want to talk about the future. So what we're going to be working on next time. Uh, let me run the game here just so you guys can see something a little bit more exciting than code while I talk here. Um, so we have options coming up, right? The options are, at least for what I can see, there's three different routes we can kind of take from this episode forward on what we can work on next time. Let me just, I wrote this down, so let me just see here. So uh, I'm going to break it down real quick in basic routes that we could do starting next episode on what we're going to be making in the game. The first one is collision. So collision would lead to enemy health, right? Health bars above the enemy, the bullets actually impacting the enemy and hurting them and then eventually killing them. And it would probably lead to uh, player lives soon after that, as far as like the enemy reaching the end of the maze and then losing a life for the player. The second option we can work on is the main menu. So that'd be when we start the game, instead of just being like kind of thrust into the middle of a battle, it would start us in like a splash screen and we'd be able to go to the game from there and start the game. And we'd also have other options like maybe going to the editor. So that would lead to the level editor where we can, uh, you know, create maps in our game and then kind of save them and load them later into the actual gameplay. That'd be more working with UI stuff. So that'd be like, probably eventually creating buttons and interactivity that way. And the third and final option is targeting. So if you see right now, our poor towers think they're doing a good job, but they're really just shooting at nothing. They're shooting at a ghost. So targeting would be 
working more on our tower's AI and its ability to reassess, like, all right, is my enemy dead right now? If so, then I'm going to retarget the next appropriate enemy, and that also be going into range types as far as, like, making a range of uh, targeting acquisition for the towers here that they can choose which enemy they want to target and probably eventually going into different types of towers that choose enemies differently. So those are our three options for what we can work on in the coming weeks. And we will eventually, obviously, finish all three throughout the course of this game, but it's more just what you guys want to work on immediately and in what order. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a poll with those three options. I'm going to post on the Patreon feed on the Indie Programmer Patreon, and you guys can check it out there and vote for what you want to work on next. And if you're not familiar, the Patreon feed is available to everyone that just pledges the minimum amount, which is just a dollar. So if you want to do that, then that'd be great. It also supports the series, which is super, super awesome. And I'm going to be using that feed a lot more to decide what we're going to work on on the game going forward. Uh, I think that's a good idea so that people can have some input instead of me just deciding, you know, this week we're going to do this. So I think that'd be super cool. I also retooled and added some new milestones on the left side of the Patreon page and some new rewards on the bottom. So if, even if you checked it out before, make sure to go check that out again because I've redone a lot of the stuff there might be new or interesting to you. Anyway, I will create that poll today and I'm going to check the results this coming Wednesday and then I will make that episode based on whatever the most popular option is. So thanks a lot for watching. You guys are amazing and I will see you next week. Hey everyone, how's it going? So before I leave you here, I went back after I just talked. So this is a little bit later. I might sound different on my mics in a different position. But anyways, I figured out what was uh, causing our bolts to not go straight towards the center of the tile, and it was very obvious to me, and I missed it. So, here we go. Inside of our projectile class, we, uh, like I said in paint, I'm not going to reopen it this time, I promise, we are compensating for the tower's uh, texture, which is 64 by 64, and we're going, you know, game tile size 2 by 2 over, game tile size 2 by 2 down, but we're not doing what we did in the tower cannon class, which is compensating for the projectile texture. So here what we need to do is right before this min or this uh, plus symbol, we're going to say minus game dot tile size divided by four. So again, we already did something similar in the tower cannon class, and that's because our projectile texture is 32 by 32, which half of that is 16, which is a fourth of our game tile size. So do the same thing on the Y, oops, minus game dot tile size divided by four. Why is that not the same length? Oh, there we go. Freaked me out for a second. So let's run this real quick and see if it works. I'm gonna put my tower right here and speed it up till they get down there. And once they get down to the bottom, oh, oh let me go back. Get that bullet back here. Oh my gosh. I'll need to make like a slider or something to control time easier. And as you can see though, passes right through the center of this tile now. So our towers should have a little bit better aim when they are attacking our enemies. All right, so thanks for watching and I will see you next time.